U.S. Army aviation does not support Army combat elements, it is an integral part of these elements in a combat action from planning to execution. This tight-knit integration is possible because these Army officers are not only professional aviators, they are also professional soldiers with a primary assignment to one of the Army's basic branches, infantry, artillery, signal corps, and so on. Through frequent briefings, these aviators are kept constantly aware of both the action in general and the specifics of the current battle situation, the disposition of friendly forces, and the location of enemy strong points. Thus, each, as a soldier, can grasp the tide of the battle, and as an aviator, can react quickly when the battle commander calls for the mobility of aviation. This mobility is greatly enhanced by the advanced new aircraft now organic to operational units. Among them is the CH-47A Chinook, the Army's standard medium transport helicopter. Manufactured by the Boeing Company's Vertol Division, the Chinook has the greatest cargo capacity of any standard aircraft, fixed or rotary wing, in the present Army inventory. It plays a vital part in the Army's newest concepts of mobility in battle, which multiplies many-fold a strike force's range, speed, surprise, and shock effect. Assigned all the brute strength jobs, the Chinook serves as the prime mover for all the support equipment which is air transportable in the battle zone. Furthermore, it is equally useful tactically. As a troop transport, it can carry a platoon of riflemen in the first wave of a strike force. And its versatility takes it all over the tactical area. into rain and low ceilings, into round-the-clock operations, and down to the treetops at 130 knots for maximum concealment and surprise. Now let's observe the support which the Chinook provides to the various Army elements. This flight of three was assigned to artillery support for a strike force. Each carries a 105 mm howitzer and its firing crew inside the cabin while the ammunition is carried externally on the cargo hook. This is typical of the Chinook's ability to carry internal and external loads simultaneously. Furthermore, each load has unit integrity, weapon, crew, and ammunition. The cabin is large enough to carry two 105 mm howitzers at the same time, if necessary. This mission was one of many flown by units of the U.S. Army in a recent series of field exercises which evaluated the many possible techniques in air mobility. As a result of these exercises, the Army has built up a solid nucleus of experience which will serve as a basis for their tactical doctrine on the subject. The Chinook also underwent a thorough evaluation. It not only met all the programmed demands on it, but its capabilities also suggested several new applications. Chinook support of artillery covers all weapons through the 155 mm howitzer weighing six and a half tons. It also includes weapons other than howitzers, for instance, a little John rocket, complete with its firing crew, a jeep for mobility, and extra missiles. As a result, a tactic has been evolved which provides exceptional mobility with a minimum of exposure for little John batteries. With its 130 knot speed, this helicopter can spot a little John anywhere in the battle area in a very short time. Then the weapon can be unloaded, erected, aimed, fired, reloaded in the helicopter, and on its way in roughly 10 minutes, well before the enemy can be expected to determine its firing position. The Chinook can also carry all of the various elements of the helicopter transportable version of the Pershing missile system. Next on this helicopter's support list are the engineers. 
These are disassembled sections of a road grader, designed to be Chinook portable in three sections, the heaviest weighing 8,000 pounds. Used in combat areas to break out airstrips for fixed-wing aircraft, this grader is flown out in formation to the designated area. Then it is placed in close proximity for reassembly. It can be bolted back together in about an hour. Even if it were possible to carry these loads internally, external transport has particular advantages for this mission. First, the loads can be hooked up much more quickly than winching them into the cabin. Second, they don't have to be lashed down, which takes time at both ends of the mission. Third, notice how easily they can be spotted close together for reassembly. In effect, the helicopters are serving as cranes, not only to transport the loads, but also to position them with precision. This gives some idea of the size of the assembled grader. In addition to its versatility in combat and logistic support, the Chinook also has significant tactical applications, especially to transport infantry in the first waves of a strike force. With its high speed and capacity, it can do the work of several smaller helicopters over the same time span. Each of these transports can carry an entire rifle platoon of 44 men with full combat gear, again preserving unit integrity and permitting them to move out immediately without taking the time to regroup. Three helicopters, 132 riflemen. Return trips can be used for medical evacuation. Up to 24 litters can be set up quickly in the cabin, plus seats for two medical attendants. With the tactical mission behind it, the Chinook is ready for a completely different role, one of its most vital ones in the new mobility concept. This cabin is equipped with a rubber fuel cell, usually referred to as a pillow tank. With the addition of a pump and service hoses, the helicopter serves as a flying tanker to refuel other aircraft in the forward tactical area. Combat aircraft can be refueled within a few minutes flying time of the battle zone and back in action quickly in contrast to a long round trip to a rear echelon fuel dump. By simple arithmetic, if you can save 25 minutes refueling each aircraft, this is equivalent to adding one more aircraft to the strike force for this period. The flexibility of this system is boundless. The aircraft can come to the tanker or the tanker to the aircraft, especially if the latter are parked and camouflaged at the edge of a wooded area for concealment between engagements. The Chinook can refuel four aircraft at once, and note that it's not necessary for these Iroquois to shut down during the operation.
This is an even more flexible method of providing fuel mobility. 500 gallon fuel cells weighing 3,500 pounds each when full. Available not only for refueling aircraft, they are exceptionally useful for keeping ground forces on the move in combat. By spotting these cells along a spearhead, helicopters can provide all the motor fuel needed by armored personnel carriers and tank battalions with the opportunity to exploit a breakthrough. The tactical advantage is obvious, since the vehicles don't have to withdraw from contact. In another illustration of its versatility, the Chinook proves fully capable of all water operations. To the pilot, they are essentially the same as those on land, and no new or different techniques are required. The rotors may be shut down and started on water, and because of the tandem's counter-rotation, startup does not cause the heavy yawing moment characteristic of other configurations. The usefulness of this water capability was recently demonstrated in a feasibility test of great tactical significance, amphibious landings via helicopter. Here, 10 troops are boarding an inflatable landing craft powered by an outboard motor, preliminary to a simulated commando type raid. Both the men and the boat were flown in by the Chinook, which also returned to evacuate them at the end of the raid. The Chinook is the only army helicopter with this capability. Its potential in limited local area engagements is quite apparent. In another feasibility test, the Chinook cooperated with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration in lifting a mock-up of a lunar excursion module adapter. Weighing nearly 5,000 pounds, the adapter is 30 feet across at the base and 49 feet high, including the tripod attached to the top for ease in hookup and transport. The extraordinary size rules out all surface shipping methods, so after intensive study, it was decided that helicopter lift was the most feasible way to ferry it between its manufacturing site at Tulsa, Oklahoma and the assembly point at Cape Kennedy, Florida, a distance of 940 miles. Test flights such as this verify the Chinook's capability for this unusual mission and it is now assigned to a regular delivery schedule for the production models of the adapter. The normal flying time between Tulsa and Cape Kennedy with this load is about 15 hours. Now in Army inventory and in quantity, the Chinook has proved it has more than met its design goals. So well, in fact, that many air mobility concepts have been built around it. Its ultimate potential is far from being reached, however. The future will bring even greater capability and versatility. Successful at present, it is also the transport helicopter of the future, able to grow with the concepts that created it. <laughs>